Hey, this is Augie, Augie's Locker Room. When you come to the store, you're going to see things that you've probably never seen before unless you've been to a museum. Great items that go back to the Rockney era to the present. Website, augieslockerroom.com. Visit us here or the website. We knew about Notre Dame's offensive problems going into this game. They came to light. We weren't as certain about Notre Dame's defensive problems, but they couldn't stop the run, and they give up a 94-yard touchdown drive as Marshall comes in Notre Dame Stadium for the first time and pulls off a 26-21 victory. You know, Tim, I mean, the way Notre Dame played last week, you, you can accept the fact that you can't hold on and beat Ohio State at Ohio State, uh, but you hate to look two games into the 2022 season but the wheels have come off this program right now, and they have to put them on real, real quickly. I think the 94-yard drive is the most troubling because, once again, John Sutt puts Notre Dame in position to kind of not seal the proceedings but take control of the game. Long drive down, 221 rushing yards for Marshall, 50 carries. I actually went into Coach Huff's press conference after the game. I asked him, was your plan anything near 50 carries? Did you think you'd have that much success? He said they knew they had to run the ball. They didn't think they could throw it all over the field and have any chance of winning and he thought they had more success that was going on running inside, and I just find that to be a surprise considering what we thought Notre Dame would be able to do on the defensive front. Yeah, Kalen Kalen LeBourne, the transfer from Florida State, ended up with 163 net yards. Never expected that to happen. You know, it's one thing for Notre Dame's offensive line uh, to fail in the in the state that it's in right now. Jarrett Patterson played. They're just not playing good football there. But for the defensive line to get gashed up the middle, regardless how good yeah. their running back is and, and what his rating was coming out of high school, they were getting beat in the trenches by a Marshall line that was rebuilding this year. Yeah, that's the unexpected. But when you think about it as well, like we could be burying the lead again. 19 points scored by Marshall. You should be able to beat Marshall if your defense holds them to 19 points. The interception touchdowns, the inefficiencies on offense, third down is a problem. Getting the third and long is a problem. Coach Huff said we felt if we could kind of get Buckner off platform with some inside pressure, he would struggle. That happened. Now, he made some plays that we knew he'd make plays with his legs. We're going to live with it. They wanted to challenge the outside receivers. They were able to do that. I think the offense complete inability is something that we have to focus on because Look, the defense is well below our expectations, well below most expectations. The offense is below all expectations. And its I don't know if this defense can be heroic going forward for 10 games, but that's what they have to be if the offense is going to perform like this. Yeah, make, make no mistake, the offense is in a terrible state right now. They can't run the football. They have to throw the football. I really, you know, when you, when you assess who are the most consistent players on the field today, it's always Tariq Bracey on the defense right. side of the ball. Yeah. And really, I mean, Tyler Buckner gave them a chance to win. He completed, he was three of three for 57 yards in the go-ahead right. touchdown yeah. drive, and he did some things with his with his feet. And Michael Mayer came up big in the, in that uh, in that series as well. So, I mean, he put them in position, and then the defense uh, caved. And at that point, you know, to at this stage of the season, to to expect the offense to string together two touchdown right. scoring drives in a row, it's just. It's not going to happen, and now Tyler Buckner apparently has a shoulder issue. They put uh, they put Drew Pine in the in in the game, and he th- threw the pick. We we had speculated about a, a, perhaps a pick six by Marshall in this game as being their only <laughs> their only touchdown, but unfortunately that was one of three, and they had two on the offensive side. I I, I mean I just don't I, I don't know where you turn to. Yeah, I mean it it starts with the offense. There's no doubt sure. about that. Uh, but but you were counting, or you knew going into the season, or you felt you knew going into the season that the defense was going to be a staple for you. And with the game, and and most of the game they have been in two games in a row. But with the game on the line, the two long yeah. touchdown drives just can't happen. Yeah, and I think at this point, when you're putting Buckner in a position where the obvious pass has to be part of it, it's his weakness right now. It, it's yeah. not part of his game where he can sit back, dissect the defense, and throw. And he, Coach Huff said we we're going to challenge the outside receivers. I don't know if it's because Jaden Thomas is inexperienced that that pass was so obviously picked off by Stephen Gilmore for the interception touchdown, or it was because Buckner was late. We saw Buckner late on some other ones, so I'm, I'm not absolving him of blame. It's something we have to yeah. – you probably have to actually ask the receivers coach and quarterbacks coach these questions. But the receivers are not helping Buckner, except I thought Lorenzo Styles came to play today. He did say post game, i got to make that catch, the diving attempt. But look, Lorenzo – Braden Lindsay's open by seven yards to end the half in an absolute defensive breakdown yeah. by Marshall. That's an easy touchdown pitch and catch for a college quarterback that has to be hit. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. I, I mean, I, I, I excluded that from the conversation, but no doubt that's a play which you don't expect to pop open at right. the end of the no. first half. Yeah. 
and it did. And he, and he quickly, Tyler Buckner quickly muscled up on it and just too much, put uh, too much on it. But, you know, I mean, th- there, are, there are plenty of places to, to turn, including, I mean, the fact that you have a very inexperienced head coach that does not know how to get them out of these situations right now. I mean, off the field and in so many ways, he's doing, Marcus Freeman's doing the right things, uh, but they have an inexperienced coaching staff collectively. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, if you want to point the finger at Tommy Reese, uh, how do you not? But by the same token, you, you, you still have the problems on the offensive line, which makes it very difficult to call anything. And, and to, to string plays together, to string calls together when your offensive line is caving in. Not a lot of good news out of Notre Dame Stadium here. As Marcus Freeman falls to 0-3 in his career at Notre Dame and 0-2 in 2022 as the Irish fall to Marshall 26-21. to